As the sun clawed its way above the horizon, it brought with it the dawn of your Bajan trials. This coming-of-age ceremony had been practiced by the Firin since ancient times. The elements wind, water, fire, and earth were the land's true rulers, reigning over life and death. Passing the Bajan trials meant receiving each element's blessing as a mature adult warrior. Only a tribe's Mara could decide which Firin were ready to attempt the Bajant Trials. Failing the trial was akin to spitting on this gift, then burying it like scat. The Mara may never see fit to give such Firin another chance at the greatest glory. As nomads, Firin are intimately connected with the land, the weather, and nature itself. Though they worship the wind as the ultimate god, all elements of nature are sacred, even death. The practice of necromancy is considered beyond evil. You knew of no human words that could describe the blasphemy fear and saw in raising the dead and disrupting the natural order. To fear in, every life has purpose. Weapons are blessed to sanctify necessary killings. Their wilderness home already makes danger a frequent companion. For these reasons, Firin are expected to settle disputes peacefully. Killing each other is strictly forbidden, especially during the trials. Traveling bards sang many stories about the Eye of Day. The lake was revered for its perfect reflection of the sun, the source of fire and light. Allegedly, this reflection could even be seen on cloudy days. Since fire and the sun were so important when scratching out a life on the plains, the lake was one of your people's most sacred places. The great fear and warrior Taye was considered the embodiment of the High Wind God. Because of his ferocity, tenacity, and skill with archery, he once journeyed to the Garden, the birthplace of the world with 11 other adventurers. The place was so full of magic, they received extraordinary powers. Some were given the duties of gods, others, like Taiyang, ascended to the roles of epic heroes. When Taiyang passed into the sunset, his memory swept into every living Firin. They fell to their knees in his honor. Fragments of those memories remained in your people's minds, even today. You'd heard the most skilled Firin could recall more. When you shot the last spirit, it happened to you. Memory showed Taiyang firing the bow for the last time. He'd expected no victory. He martyred himself to save his race. Mist demons were summoned by fear and shaman. They were assassins who killed without leaving a trace. Memory showed you that one had been sent after Taiyang in his youth. However, a dark-haired man had saved him. Perhaps the mist demon you now faced was a similar spell gone awry. Onar was no master necromancer, or the ritual could never have been interrupted so easily. But an acolyte could have never raised as many undead as you'd seen in the valley. There had to be another necromancer at work. And a powerful one indeed. It was probably a vile Harani. They taught the Firin of necromancy in the first place. Wisps of Taiyang's memories filled you. He too had dealt with necromancy. Kyrios's army had been mostly undead. Once he'd seen the decapitated head of a necromancer transform into a bird and fly off. 
The undead it left behind raised their hands in supplication. Dai Yang shot the bird, and the undead dissolved. When the fear in fled Aurora, flush with the horror of fighting undead armies, the soul eye became treasured as a way of keeping such atrocity at bay. Its faceted surface could reveal anything tainted with death. From undead themselves to the necromancers who raised them. The most elite warriors dedicated themselves to guarding it. The Wind Whip's uniform caused more memories to whirl before you. Having grown up a nomad, unused to authority, Tai Yang had been mistrustful of anyone in uniform. However, he'd eventually changed his mind. You saw him with a dark-haired human, both in uniform, laughing and crafting their own blades. Elter was determined to become your ally to repay you for saving her life. It reminded you of Tai Yang's partner in crime, the man who'd saved him from the fog assassin and later shared his uniform. History told you the man had to be Jin, who became Kyrios, the god of destruction. However, it was hard to reconcile the friendly face you'd seen with that kind of monster. Working with the Shadowhawks triggered a flood of Tai Yang's memories from before the expedition. He and Jin had founded the Shadowhawks calling the best and brightest from local street gangs. They enforced strict rules of conduct, brotherhood, loyalty, and honor among thieves. It seemed that the Shadowhawks had fallen far from those ideals. The City of Towers held echoes of Delphinad, though it wasn't nearly as grand. You imagined Jean and Taiyang around every corner, dodging guards or laughing with the Hawk Brothers. They were happy then, before their journey to the Garden, before the Great War ravaged the Rory, before Jean was corrupted by the Dread God's powers. Now that you'd infiltrated the Shadowhawks, Tai Yang's memories of the group seemed strange. Back then, They'd been outlaws, but also respected peacekeepers. But in Mahadevi, ordinary citizens cowered from them. Either the Shadowhawks had forgotten their roots, or something more sinister threatened the city. As you padded through Mahadevi, you heard whispers about an evil alchemist. He seemed to be the main source of people's fears and reluctance to step outside. Rumors spoke of unwary travelers snatched from unlit alleys and replaced with mindless slaves. The Shadowhawks were a known risk, but what people fear most is the unknown. The alchemist's unsettling activities were just Kraft had used the Soul Eye to partially send his assistant's minds to the hereafter, leaving them with just enough to act as slaves. Tai Yang had met such men. The dread necromancer, Anthema, had committed similar atrocities. He'd even raised fallen Shadowhawks as undead servants to Kyrios. Seeing friends as undead had rent Tai Yang's heart. The Shadowhawks wanted to kill you. You knew from his memories that Tai Yang wouldn't approve. Not without hearing your side of the story. His Shadowhawks had been decent and loyal, criminals with rules. No wonder he'd been horrified to see them reanimated. But these Shadowhawks were little better anyway. When the wind whips mentioned the Rory, the fur on your neck tingled, a memory bothered your mind. You saw hundreds of fearing warriors in crimson cloaks, 
charging into battle. Dozens of different tribes had united to battle the forces of Kyrios. Later, Tayang overheard odd whispers about the fierce wind whips at the Battle of Terena. You felt him beam with pride at the new term. Though Firin felt little connection to cities, Astera was poured about with respect. It was the only port that allowed free trade between both Haranya and Nuya. Grell urged you to keep the Soli well hidden. He was probably worried about it falling victim to the port's active black market. When you killed the victim in the port, you saved his body from being used by evil. Tayang had faced a similar choice. Kill Kyrios to save what was left of Jin? He couldn't. When Kyrios lay dying, Tayang saved him. A fellow expedition member helped. Every petal on every flower has a reason to exist, she said. We cannot let the God of Destruction die. Someday, we will need him. To enable the Soli to be restored sooner, the Wind Whips had brought its base from its secret cave to their headquarters. Precious few Wind Whips were awaiting your arrival. Most were still out on patrol, having not yet received the message the Sola had been found. Grell had been using you all along. Even Onar had been involved in his plot as one of his students, or victims. Luckily, unlike the necromancer Tayang had faced, Grell didn't transform into a bird to escape. However, Neither did he fight. He had someone else for that. You recognized the beast immediately. The creature in Shaka had featured in several of Taeyang's most horrific battlefield memories. Centuries later, he, it, still alive. Taeyang had recognized in Shaka as being one of the Shadowhawks that Anthelon had reanimated. It had turned Tayang's stomach to see what had been done to his former hawk brother. And Shaka had only grown more hideous over time. Aside from Anthalan, and Shaka had been the most powerful mage in the army of Kyrios. Tayang had desperately wanted to put his fallen friend to rest. As the memory flickered out, the last spirit feared her fall. When you finally defeated Enshaka, he didn't crumble to the floor in a mass of bleeding flesh. Instead, with a howl of pain and rage, he vanished. Grell followed suit. No longer in danger, you found yourself unable to resist, collapsing from your own wounds. Little did you know, in the room beneath you, the Sola had vanished too. Silent Forest had a long history of tragedy and magic. The trees had been watered by the blood of several wars. Tombs of ancient kings dotted the landscape. A terrible mystery was supposedly sealed at their soundless lake. The entire forest was allegedly cursed due to a powerful mage's experiment. The place was awash with enchantment. A relic as magical as the Sola could be nowhere but there. The Firin weren't native to Arori, but Haranya. However, after migrating to Arori, they'd found true glory. Endless plains, Vast herds of snow lions and winds filled with strange energy. If the Soli would help the Firin reclaim their greatest territory, it had to be found. Who better to do so than one who wielded Tai Yang's bow?